Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Have a 
Set. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for being with us today. We are Angelo and Veronica at Higher Place Church. What a pleasure it is to be able to speak into your life. What an honor it is, really. It really is a, a, an honor that anybody would listen, and I pray that you hear more than anything. You, we can listen, but sometimes we don't hear. So I pray that you hear by the Spirit of the Lord what God is sharing through us to you that you uh, get, and we just want, I, you know, I want to praise God for the miracle of Celia, that, yeah. that God had, you know, they went to the hospital and they couldn't find anything. Amen. I love yeah. that yeah. when man can't, when man fails, when they show who they really are, okay, in all their weakness, because right. we're, we're, the Bible says man's help is useless, man's help is, and what's grace, in vain, grace, you know, grace, you know, the, you know, you know, you know, it's like, <laughs> We, 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 we know that grace is made in humility and humbleness. Okay, so you pray that these people humble themselves. Yeah, Because exactly. if you don't humble yourself, God will. Ooh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh well, no, that's, that's not right. grace. It's better though. to humble yourself that's now. That's fire and brimstone. I'm, I'm sorry, Lord. Amen. I, I apologize. What Jesus preached, fire and brimstone. He, that's exact, right. That's, that's right. exactly what he Amen. preached. And you know, if you're going to church and they ain't, pre and they ain't preaching <laughs> fire and brimstone, get out. Because yeah. we that's how we grow. That's how we get strong. That's how we get built up in our faith is by getting the truth spoken into our lives. Amen. Not by... Being nice and happy, that's all well and good. I mean, I have no problem with being nice. Well, maybe I do. But, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> don't get smart. Anyway, we're just, I praise God for that, for that testimony. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so let's move forward. Yeah, and... yeah. Okay, so this is our, actually our third installment of this very, very important message. Guys, I want you guys to get this because for the longest mm. time for... Uh, well, gosh, 25, 30 years, I did not get this, okay? And I think a lot of Christians would have to admit they might not get this either. Wow. But it's okay because we're going to give you the word today and we're going to make things really clear. And so this is becoming very more, uh, very more, uh, this is becoming <laughs> very much more clear to me. Um, about the law versus faith. And this is a super important message because it's the difference between, between being cursed and blessed. Okay, mm -hmm. those are your two options. And I want to be blessed. You want to be blessed. Guys, you guys want to be blessed. So let's get into this. You know, it's funny because, you know, <laughs> the very thing about offense, you know, and I didn't realize, you know, I, there was a, a girl at work that I was speaking to, and last night she came up to me and goes, don't you ever speak my name out of your mouth again, because I'm a homosexual. I'm like, just walk up and tell me this? I go, I mean, it's amazing to me the, the, the rudeness, first of all, of, of, of the audacity of the homosexual spirit to jump on me, because they're angry because they're gay. So... I go, first of all, I never said anything wow. of the sort. I'm telling you, the, 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 the mindset of, of the, the offense is, is mind-blowing. Okay? I go, yeah. if you're Pride. gay, that's your choice. Pride. That's okay. Then be gay. What, what, it's got nothing to do with me. I'm just telling you what the book says. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at you. And we just said you need to humble yourself. Right. And they have a whole community of pride. And I thought you I know? was ministering to this person, and they were getting angrier and angrier, you know, at me. 
I'm like, well, okay. Well, if for Christ's sake you want to be angry with me, then that's fine. I'll take it. That's okay. It's all right with me. I love you anyway in, in, in the name of the Lord. Yeah. And I pray that you get you repent and turn from your wicked lifestyle. That's not going to end well. You're only going to spend a few years here on earth. Okay, then it's going to be over. Then where are you going? So okay. that's an example of being under the law because right. practicing sin puts you under the law. So the Lord showed me mm. that our parents represent the law. So our parents set rules and we were punished if we did not obey. Correct? Well, I was. Yeah. I, I was. <laughs> My mother we tried lived her some, best. Yeah. We lived mostly and we lived, well, I did. I lived mostly in fear and guilt and shame because of this. You know, because I was so afraid of my father. Um, so even if we didn't have the best parents in the world, it's irrelevant because they did what they were supposed to do in representing the law. Okay? Well, at least your and, father was a real man. I mean, he represented a manhood. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he was a real man. Not like some yeah. of the men today. Yeah, yeah. So That's I right. praise God for that. I oh, know. Amen. Amen. That's right. So um, we, so we were kept under lock and key to protect us until the appointed time, mm -hmm. you know, when we became, an, became adults. So our parents loved us, mm. but they, their love cannot save us. Well, well you see? it'll never satisfy us. They our parents love us, yeah. but they, they're not our savior. Okay? So God gave us the law to mm. protect us because he loves us, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and, and he's our savior. He, he saves us, okay? So this is just an example of, because I want to give you guys illustrations of what represents the law and what represents faith, okay? <clears throat> so when children disobey, a parent becomes stricter usually, okay? I know I did. That represents the law. And when, a child, and when a child obeys, a parent becomes more lenient. That represents faith, okay? So the difference between law and faith, and we said this in, in their last messages, the difference <clears throat> is have to versus want to, mm -hmm. okay? So when you lived as a child in your parents' home, you had to... Obey, obey them. them. You had to obey them, yeah. right? Uh, or, or else you got, you know, reprimanded or you got a beating or what have you. Uh, but when you became married, you loved your spouse and wanted to serve them because you wanted to. So here's another illustration um, of the law and faith. Guys, God does not, God does not want us to serve him because we have to. Correct. He wants us to serve him because we want to, because we love him. He wants to serve mm. us. I'm sorry. He wants us to serve him out of love, not out of law. Right. Not because of the law. So that is the big difference, okay, between the law and faith, okay? So God wants a faithful wife. He doesn't want a harlot. Okay. Wow. He wants somebody to want to be with him because of who he is, not because of what he has to give. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can't yeah, be we, we, gold diggers. Right. Yeah. We have to, you know, love somebody because of them. Don't, and don't we, prostitute your faith. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah. That's right. That's, that's something that is so, so very wrong with the word of faith, prosperity, gospel, is like their their love for God is pretty shallow because they just want something from God. Yeah, well, and I'll tell you, they 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 speak in half truths because that's how they stay in business. They would not they they could they could take one of the two roads, Veronica. They could either be motivational speakers and forget the word, right? Or they could take some of the word, part of the motivational speaker, which is a half truth. Okay, they're telling you the truth, and then they're telling you some fable, and, and they're ask, and, and asking you to b believe their hype, rather than get rid of the, the, uh, 
the fake and just preach the gospel. That's right. Then, yes, there's prosperity in the word. Well, stay focused on what the word calls prosperity, That's not right. what man calls yeah. prosperity. Because what happens is then you become, then you're free from being a motivational speaker. Now you're a preacher. Because how can the, the Bible doesn't say the, 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 the Bible needs a motivational speaker. No, it doesn't. It says it needs a preacher. That's right. That's right. It Big needs difference. a preacher. It needs a preacher. Like, now here's something that you hear in Word of Faith very much and, and in churches everywhere across the country. The word tithe. Now, oh, here boy. at Higher Place, now, let me, I'm going to make this very simple. I wish you would tithe. You, you haven't been tithing. I'm going to make this very simple. We don't believe in obligatory, and this mm. is a, that is a word, actually, obligatory Th- tithing. Up? No, it's oh. a word. I looked it up. You know, tithing out of obligation. Right. But we believe in cheerful giving. giving. Now, both actions look the same, Right. But it's the heart and wow. the attitude wow. that is different. One wow. is of the law and the other one is of faith. Okay? So, guys, don't <clears throat> let anyone put you under uh, the wow, law. Wow. I don't care who it is. Yeah. Teacher, preacher, pastor, don't let any Christian singer, don't let anyone put you under the law. Hey, Stay. You know, Stay in Christ. And we can tell you from people who receive blessings from those who watch this, this part, this, uh, the service that have given to this ministry. We are so grateful and thankful. And I, and I believe you know that, you know, it's not, um, out of selfish gain. You know, you know that when you give to this ministry, you're giving to a need, and I I'm a, and I praise God for it, and I thank you for it from the bottom of my heart. And 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 and, yes, and, and you yes. know that's that to me is when you give, you give not grudgingly, but with a cheerful yes, attitude. Yeah, that's and what I we know, want because that's how the person right. that's how they get blessed. I don't want your tithes. <laughs> you can give that to the old to the to the law, but we want we want you to give to the love. Amen. Well, that wasn't why I brought that up. Oh, yeah. I just well, wanted I, to yeah, give a I, picture I, But I want to be thankful and grateful for what, faith. what yes. people are doing. That's right. We're very, you know, very it, thankful. It's in very God difficult times. Of, very, God takes care of us. Yeah, he'll so take care Natalie, of you as well. So yeah. one, one more illustration that we use, Natalie Wood mm. on remarrying mm. this guy, Robert, Robert Wagner, Wagner yeah. and she actually ended up losing her life, mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, many people say, actually her own sister says that he brought her, brought her to her watery demise. Okay. Wow. And she said before wow. she remarried him, she said to her sister, it's better to have the devil, you know, than the devil you don't know. What a strange thing to say. First of all, calling this man a devil and and saying it's better to have the devil you know Very sad. she was choosing between the devil she knew and some other devil she didn't know <laughs> no <laughs> so but but here's the thing again god showed me the law versus faith so i'd rather go into the unknown mm-hmm. with god mm-hmm. than go back to my own life that i that i know so well with the devil you see what I'm saying? So a lot of times we're just more comfortable in our sins. We're more comfortable in our familiar ways. We're more comfortable with living in fear and guilt and shame. And we're more comfortable be just because we know it. Mm-hmm. That, that is a picture of the children of Israel wanting to go back to Egypt instead of going on with Moses. Moses was their deliverer and their judge and it, and they didn't want to go on to the promised land because it was unknown. And wow. that's a picture of faith wow. where we don't know. Yeah, yeah. We don't totally know. But that that's where faith comes in and trusting the Lord. Hmm. Okay. So let's go to this scripture, Galatians 4. And I know somebody's going to get this. Um, Galatians 4, 1 through 9. Now I say that the heir, as long as... As he is a child, 
differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. But he is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, (laughs) to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Guys, you see that? We are, when we are adopted, Mm -hmm. then you know what? Our parents are no longer our parents. That's right. That's no longer our family. We, we're born into a new family. That's right. I have a new father, a true father. Your heavenly father. Heavenly father. Yeah. And I'm no longer under the law of my parents, mm-hmm. of the world, mm-hmm. of, of, you know what I'm saying? I'm no longer under those laws and I'm no longer under that, that law. And I find it interesting that Jesus said, pray to the father, okay? There is, quote unquote, hypoth- really no mother in, in the heavenly realm that we speak of. We speak of the father. Mm-hmm. We don't say the mother. Actually, the mother uh, could be Jerusalem, heavenly, not this right. Jerusalem. No, 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 no. The heavenly Jerusalem. Right. So, right. yeah. And it says here in verse six, because ye are sons, God, because your sons now, not under the law, <clears throat> adopted by God, because your sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Mm. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Guys, do you see that? Within, under the law, we're just a servant. In Christ, we're sons. We are, because we are adopted. Amen. By God the Father. Amen. So we're so much more. We're not just a lowly mm. servant. Mm-hmm. Okay, we become a son or a daughter in Christ. It says in verse 8, Howbeit then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them by which nature, nature are no gods. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Hmm. So Paul was saying, why are you going back to the law? Mm -hmm. Why are you going back there? Why are you going back to your old life? Why are you going back to your old sins? Why do you want to adhere to the law of Moses, to Levitical law? Why are you going back there? There, yeah, Paul was clear. When said, you ha- know, now know Christ. Right, and he said, forget those things that lie behind and press toward the mark. In other words, why are we looking backwards? You know, it's, like, it's like driving a car and looking in the rearview mirror constantly. You're just looking at the rearview mirror. You're going to crash. You're going <laughs> to crash. You're going to crash. <laughs> and and, and yeah, that's, that's where right. we are as humans. We, we, oh, we want to remember our past and we want... What's so great about it? Move forward. There's go good on. things and there's bad things. But it's better to go forward and look to what God's got ahead of you rather than what's behind you. Yeah. So many people are under the mm. law and don't know it. So many Christians are under the law. I didn't know that um, a- after we uh, became born again, we went right back to the law and we didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. No, because, because didn't even know because the half truths because it was pulled deceivers. us in. Right. Yes. Because they pull you in with their half truth. It sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. They talk faith. Yeah. But then they slip it in. They slip in the law, and you know what? You're right back under. And then they use their stuff as a means to woo you in. Yeah. In other words, yes. oh, the only ones that have the stuff. Are the leaders? Yeah, yeah. The people that yeah. the, the the laymen got nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how is that fair? Yeah, you know. <laughs> so here is living under the law, guys. This is going to make it very plain. Here are here is living under the law. Number one, the law is not of faith. Mm-hmm. How do we know this? Galatians three twelve. 
and the law is not of faith. There you go. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Okay, the law is not of faith. But if you live by the law, you're going to die by the That's law. That's right. I don't, I don't want that. Guys, I don't want that for you. That's right. God doesn't uh, want that for you. Yeah, God doesn't want that. Number two, the law does not give life and does not impart righteousness. Galatians 3.21, is the law then again, uh, I'm sorry, is the law then against the, the promises, promises of God? God? God forbid. For if there had been a law which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the law doesn't give life, does not give righteousness, mm -hmm. okay? So when we have to be made righteous before God, and we are through the blood of Jesus. Um, 2 Corinthians 3, 6, uh, who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit. Oh, here it is. For the letter killeth, but the mm. spirit giveth life. Amen. Okay? The letter killeth, yeah. but the spirit gives, gives life. Okay? So the spirit, we need the spirit. We don't need, we, we, we come from out of the law to Christ. The law is necessary. Oh, well, you know what? It says it right here. Number three, the law is for sinners. sinners. Yeah. Galatians 3, 19. Wherefore then, wherefore then serveth the law? What is the law? What is the law for? What, what is it? What is it for? Right. What is the purpose? It was added because of transgressions mm -hmm. so that we could recognize our sin. Okay. So that's why the law is necessary. So the law is not abolished. It's fulfilled. Well, what's sad is sin is in, you know? Yeah. So, so you know, yes. we, we celebrate sin. You know, that's the, the part of homosexuality yeah. that I talk about is that they want you to tolerate it and they want you to celebrate it. How can I celebrate somebody going to hell? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, we, I love you enough to tell you this. In fact, God told you this. So that's, you know, right. we're living in the law. We're living by the law, and we're going to die by it. Right. Sodom and Gomorrah. That's right. Hello, people. Sodom and Gomorrah. What? Please. That's when Jesus mentioned fire and brimstone. Don't tell me that we're haters or bullies when we're telling you, Love, we're sharing sure, love yeah. to you. We're trying to save your soul. That's what God, that's what Jesus died on the cross for. Right. Don't tolerate sin at any level. I don't care if it's adultery, you know, murder, whatever. We don't celebrate it. So it says here, Romans 7, uh, 7 and 13. Uh, so Paul says here, what shall we say then? Is the mm. law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law mm. had said, thou shalt not covet. Mm -hmm. He's saying, he's saying, I would have not known my sin wow. if it weren't for the law. So yeah. that's why the law is so necessary. Uh, 13 uh, was then that which is good made death unto me, God forbid, but sin that it might appear sin working death in me by mm. that which is good. That sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. Be Oof. So because of the law, sin doesn't just become uh, a bad habit. Right. Sin is exceedingly sinful and all of a sudden you realize you're getting the death penalty. Right. The wages of sin Is are death. death. Correct. But we're exonerated. But if we go on to Christ, we become exonerated. We live. Through his blood and We live and we do not die. Repentance. Right. See, we live and do not die. When you go to heaven, you're going to live. So when you die, you actually don't die. You live. That's right. That's yeah. the blessing of heaven. You live. You don't die. That's right. If you want to tolerate sin, well then, guys, that's yeah. the other place is not heavenly. Okay? I mean, that's just <laughs> yeah. the reality. Yeah, fire and I mean, brimstone. I mean, again, right. you can believe it or you don't believe it. I'm like, why would you even risk it? 
Why even take a chance that we're wrong? And you're right. Boy, I'll tell you what, that's, I mean, I, I see people gamble all the time. You know, and I say, why are you doing, why are you gambling? Why? Why risk it? Gambling with their lives. Yeah, well, yeah. first of all, they're, they're, they're gambling with money they don't even have. Yikes. Yeah. And then they but now you're gambling with your soul. Yeah. That's a little different than your dollar bills. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. Okay, so number four. Oh, my gosh. I have been wanting to understand this scripture for such a long time because this is a scripture that we did hear a lot in church. But now I understand what it means. And, guys, if you've been listening to these messages, mm-hmm. you're going to understand it now as well. So this is number four, you know, what the law does. The law puts you under the curse. (laughs) Look at this scripture, Mm. Galatians 3.10. For as many are as of the works of the law are under the curse. For For it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Now, what is the reason that the law puts us under a curse? Guys, because of sin. Mm -hmm. This is because of sin. Mm -hmm. We we become, how do you say, responsible for our own sin instead of letting Jesus handle it and atone it with his blood. Right. Cleanse us with his blood, yeah. That everyone who doesn't continue, because if you do one law, you have to do them all. Okay? That's just, that's part of the law. Okay? And who in the world can do that? Like people, um, I, I spoke to somebody recently, and they wanted, wanted to, this has kind of sparked this, this message, um, and it's something that God is, had been showing me anyway. But this is there's a per, uh, this person wanted to go back to the law of Moses. I'm like, well, wait, where where does it say that? Where does it say that? Once you're in Christ, right, you're a new creature. Where does it creature. say that that we go back to the law of Moses? That we do Levitical law? That we do no? What what is going Jesus on? Jesus came to fulfill the law. Okay, he didn't abolish it, but he came to fulfill it. Okay, so he didn't say go back to it. So I wanted to understand this once and for all. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to study this. I, I, mm. I, I need to understand this because here it is. Once we become saved, okay, we need to know what we're, how do you say? Oh, what you know when you go from. to work? Hold on. You know when you go to work? You want you want to know your job, right? What if you get to your job and you don't know what to do? Oh, for a year, that I, I would get there and they'd be like, "Well, what am I doing tonight?" <laughs> for a year, All right? I mean, this, it's ridiculous. What is a job without a job description? Exactly. I want to know what my part is. What's my responsibility? What's my responsibility? Exactly. Right. And so that I can be serve God. And I can do a good job. And be faithful and and be like okay. I know what I'm supposed I'm to do. And right. there's peace in that understanding. Uh-huh. You know, so if we go back to the law, it's like, wait, that's unnecessary. You just came out of the law mm-hmm. when, you re- when you came to Christ and you repented of your sins. Staying under the law keeps you under a curse because it says, first of all, it says you don't need Jesus. And it says that, you know what? You're still a sinner. You are pr- still practicing sin and sin is what brings you under the curse and we know that sin is in oh boy is it oh yeah boy is it yes so this was something that was just so important for me to understand and it's like oh my gosh i finally understand why the works of the law if you think that you're going to be justified get into heaven be saved by the works of the law, mm. you bring yourself under a curse because that can never, ever happen. The only uh, sacrificial lamb is, is Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. He was sent for your sins. Amen. For you to be blessed. And no works of the law can get you to heaven. Only 
being forgiven by Jesus Christ. Because if not, then we would, we would have reason to boast in our works. Correct. We would have reason right. to boast and no flesh shall, shall boast in the Lord. No flesh shall glory in the Lord. Right. Just like you were saying, we have to be totally humble mm-hmm. when we come before him. So it's not anything that we have done. We are granted life. We are granted salvation and we are granted repentance. And that is a gift. Yeah, it amazes me. We were in the industry, music industry for mm-hmm. such a long time. And that industry is all about you getting glory. Even they call it gospel music. Who's getting the glory here? You're getting the stellar. You're getting the dove. You're getting the Grammys. <laughs> Miss 33rd degree Grammy winner. Okay. You're getting the glory. Don't, don't reflect your success unto God. Wait a minute. He gave you the gift. He gave you the talent. But he gets the glory all the way through. You get none. Why do, why do we have to receive compliments constantly? I mean, we have to be affirmed constantly. To A man is tested by his praise, by the Ooh, praise you get from, right. from others. We, that's a huge test. Mm. That's a huge test. And, well, um, I got, I, they got a big red, red F. And Jesus, uh, <laughs> the Bible says, Fail. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. That's exactly right. So I'd rather yeah. have the I, praise I, I, of God. And, and I don't care what you think of my music, of or my singing, or my playing, or my musicianship. That means nothing because so, we give the glory to God for everything we do right. and say. Everything, period. We don't need to be lifted up by men. I want to be lifted by God because he is the lifter of my head, of according heads. to the word. So this is what I told this dear sister who decided to go back to the law, right. live, um, try to live a Jewish, Israelite life. You're not Jewish. Life, right. <laughs> right. I mean, and live by the law of Moses. I'm like, oh my gosh. So anyway, this is what I wrote this down and I'm going to show this to you guys because I wrote it in my devotional. Um, now here it is. When we receive God's love and forgiveness. Okay. Now we love him mm-hmm. because he first loved, loved us. us. Yeah. That's in first John four nineteen. That's right. We then now out of resp- out of the response for his overwhelming love for us, mm. we can then love him in response. We love him because he first loved us. We can then love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So first we got to receive his love. Yeah, so th- yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. So that, okay, that first commandment gives us the ability to do the second Gives us the ability to love our neighbor as ourself. Now, so funny to me because it says love your neighbor as yourself. And that assumes that you even love yourself. Some of us are not even there. Okay. Yeah, but a lot of people people that I minister to say, I'm with, you know, um, God loves me the way I am. But see, he's waiting for you. Right. But see, (laughs) but God is waiting for you to love him the way he is, holy and righteous. God never turns a blind eye to sin. No. Because sin destroys us, and he wants what is good for us. There is no sin in heaven. I can promise you that. That's right. You have to be washed by the blood of Jesus. Right. We're all sinners, but we're washed by the blood. Exactly. So we can't do the second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself, without doing the first love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Mm. And we can't even do that without first receiving God's love, which is in the, in a person, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the order that, that we have, we have to do it in this order. Okay. So when we love our neighbor as ourselves, we fulfill the whole law. Love fulfills the law. That's right, because God is love. But first we must receive God's love through his son, Jesus Christ, which is salvation. Salvation comes 
first. So number one, receive God's love. Guys, believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. That That's the unity. That he died for your sins, was crucified, was buried, and rose again on the third day. Number two, love God with everything. Amen. Number three, love your neighbor as yourself. Guys, this is possible through Christ. Some of, some of us say, you know, I mean, because I always said, like, how, how can I do that? How can I do this? But you can through receiving God's love and his Holy Spirit. You really can. Right, and that's the unity that Christ is talking about, the oneness that mm-hmm. God is talking about. Not what the world calls unity, not what the world calls one. No, what does God call one? Loving him and loving your neighbor. Mm-hmm. That's the one that he's talking about. Don't get it confused. And that's what we're, that's where we're at. See, the devil tries to twist it, and he tries to, to, to turn it around to make it sound good But at the end, if you're not receiving God's word and his truth, you're not going to be saved. Okay? Guys, please, we're we're crying for your souls here. So guys, remember Romans 13, 8. Oh, no man, anything but to love one another. Mm -hmm. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. And verse 10, love worketh no ill to his neighbor, Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Mm -hmm. Then Galatians says it again. Um, Galatians 5, 14. For all the law is fulfilled even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay? So that is the fulfillment Mm -hmm. of God. Now, we have to remember what God means by love. (laughs) For God so loved the world that he gave Gave his his only only begotten begotten son. Son. That's right. So God gives us the definition of love. That whoever believeth shall not perish because he never created us to perish. Never. We make that choice. So the definition of love is giving our lives. That's right. Giving our lives. Exactly. Laying down our lives. Laying down your life. Giving your life. That was... Jesus' definition of love. How can you be his disciples if we're not willing to forsake all? That's right. Exactly. So, guys, uh, so you can, guys, you can look at those scriptures. Oh, and here's just one more. Faith establishes the law. Actually, I didn't write it out. But anyway. Okay. Faith establishes the law. Love fulfills the law. That's good. Amen. Guys, don't go back to the law. And if you are under the law. Receive Christ yes. and don't go back. Yes. Receive Christ yes. and do not go back. So guys, I just want to pray this quick prayer with you. Um, it's actually, we, we prayed it the other week, but you know what? I want to pray um, these words and guys, can you can um, just feel it in your heart or, or, or speak these words with us. So Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Father God, help us not to go back from following you you. and not be tempted to go back to our old lives under the law. Not to go back to old ways just because we're familiar with that life. I thank you, Father God, that you have made us a new creature in Christ Jesus. God has so much more if we trust him, obey him, and live by faith. Thank you for redeeming us from the curse of the law, which it brings because of sin. So we thank you, God. We thank you for the law because it did show us our sin and you showed us our guilt. But now we confess our sins to you and we ask you to grant us repentance. Mm -hmm. And so we thank you, God for your forgiveness through Christ Jesus, through his blood. Thank you for the new life that you have given us because it's so much better than the old. Thank you for uh, graduating us, letting us graduate to freedom and the law of liberty in Christ Jesus and going on. We're going on to the promised land and we're never going back to the law. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.